I know of two ways to make visual cues that draw me closer to God. Start with the truth or start with the visual. And I know a few things that make great visual cues too. At the end of the video, I'll share a couple thoughts on cues that use our other senses too. So if you're interested in that, either skip to the end or watch through the whole video. A visual cue is anything we see that prompts a response. I'm going about my day and I see something that prompts me to turn my attention to God. It happens all the time when I'm paying attention. So why not set the stage? Why not surround myself with things that turn my attention to God? It's a way I'm hacking my visual learning style, though any learning style will benefit. The human brain processes visuals 60,000 times faster than text, no matter our preferred learning style. So maybe you want to hack visual cues too. The first way I make visual cues that draw me closer to God is by choosing a truth I want to remember. It could be anything from a principle I want to live by to my takeaway from Bible study from action to take to remembering to rest in God. Anything that helps me disciple myself to Jesus is a win. For example, in Matthew 6, 26 and 27, Jesus says God takes care of the birds and that we are more valuable than birds. Every bird I see is an opportunity to remember to trust God, to remember that God is faithful. I can leave it at that. Things I see throughout my day are visual cues. When I see a bird, I remember that God is faithful. I can also take it a step farther. I can get an art print of a bird to display where I'll see it often. I offer a few on my website if you're interested. That link is here on the video and in the description. The second way I make visual cues is by starting with a visual cue and assigning a meeting. The visual can be anything. I mean anything. You decide the visual, and you decide what it means to you. Here's a visual cue I set up for myself, starting with what I saw and assigning it meaning. I once looked out the window and saw the clouds flying by in the sky. It wasn't windy here, the trees were hardly moving, but up in the higher altitudes it was very windy. You can experiment with a couple ideas, make a list to choose from, brainstorm. That day I didn't need to do that. I knew pretty quickly what I wanted that visual cue to mean. I wanted it to be a prayer. When I saw clouds moving through the sky quickly, I wanted to remember this prayer. God, I want to be as obedient to you as the clouds are to the wind. So two ways to set up visual cues for yourself and hack our human preference for visuals. Start with the meaning and come up with a visual or start with something you see and assign a meaning. And either way, you may find one of the prints on my website is the perfect fit for you, so take a look. I'd love to hear some of your own visual cues, whether you've thought about them that way before or not. Leave me a comment and tell me all about it. I promised a couple thoughts on using our other senses as cues too, and I'm here to deliver. For cues that deal with listening, you might make a particular song a cue to a biblical truth, or your baby's cry, or the sound of doors opening and closing, or a wind chime. It would do me good to make the dishwasher's I'm done beeping noise a cue, since it likes to repeat itself. Any sound, whether it's irritating or not, can become a cue to turn your attention to God. Then there's touch. You might make a cue out of the feeling of the biting wind, or the warmth that spreads through your fingers when you hold a mug of hot chocolate. You can make a cue out of your favorite textures too. For smell, there are limitless options. A cue for the smell of yeast proofing, or of vanilla, or of sauteed garlic and onion. And of course, we have taste. You could establish a cue for salty flavors, savory ones, sweet ones, and more. The point is to hack our senses, visual or otherwise, so that we set the stage and continue turning our attention to God. 